In this video, we are going to find the matrix representations of angular momentum operators. These are the two expressions we derived in the previous video in which these are the simultaneous eigenstates of j squared and jz. These are the eigenvalues of j squared and the eigenvalues of jz are h bar m. J's are quantum numbers associated with angular momentum j squared and are non-negative half integers. And M's are quantum numbers associated with the Z component of the angular momentum and have 2J plus 1 values based on each J. Now, take these five values of J. Each of them has 2J plus 1 different states which are orthonormal and are shown by a set of kets. We can also write their bra counterparts which are used to find the expectation value of the operator in this basis. We can use these kets and bras to find the elements of the matrix representing any operator in the basis of J and M. These bras are the rows of the matrix and kets are the columns. Now let's find the matrix representation of J squared and JZ operators for quantum number J1. If J is 1, the set of bra vectors are the rows and we can use cats to show the column of the operator's matrix. Let's start with J squared. These are the three elements of the first row which all have the bra 1 and 1 on the left. The second row is denoted by 1 and 0 bras and the last row has 1 and minus 1 on the left. For example, the second column is represented by 1 and 0 cats, and the second row has 1 and 0 as bras. All the elements which are not on the diagonal are 0 because the angular momentum squared operator doesn't change the cats. For the other elements, the three elements on the diagonal, we can see that for J1, eigenvalues are 2 h bar squared. So, this is the matrix representation of J squared. For the Z component of angular momentum, we should do the same thing with JZ. It doesn't change the cats, so all the non-diagonal elements are zero. The eigenvalues of JZ are M H bar. So, the middle element is zero because M is zero. And the matrix can be written with two non-zero elements. We can use the matrix form of the angular momentum operator to find the eigenstates which are in the form of a 3 by 1 matrix. Multiply the first row of the matrix by the column matrix gives h bar a equals h bar ma. The second row gives 0 equals h bar mb and the last row gives an equation for the last elements. If M is 1, we have these three equations. The second and the third expressions give B and C to be 0, and the first one suggests that A can be chosen to be any number. As we want our eigenstates to be orthonormal, we choose A to be 1, so that when we calculate the inner product, it gives 1, which means the eigenstate is orthonormal. We can do the same thing for M0. A and C yield 0 and B can be any number. Again, we choose B to be 1. We repeat the same process for M equals minus 1 and the last eigenstate is found to be 0, 0, 1. Now, these are our eigenstates for J1. The inner product of each eigenstate with itself gives 1 and the inner product of different eigenstates would be 0. This is the orthonormality condition of the eigenstates. Let's find this series. We are finding the multiplication of each eigencat and its bra, which is different from the inner product, and gives three squared three by three matrices. If we add them, we are left with the identity matrix for which all the elements on the diagonal are one and non-diagonal elements are all zero. This shows that these eigenstates form a complete set and we can span the whole space using these three cats. Two other operators that we used in the previous video to find the eigenvalues of angular momentum were the latter operators. 
We can also write the x and y components of the angular momentum using them. The raising operator acting on simultaneous eigenstates of j squared and jz raises the number, the quantum number m, by one unit. Also, the lowering operator acting on j and m lowers m by one unit. Let's find the matrix representation of j plus operator using this expression for j equals 1. When j plus acts on 1 and 1, which is the upper limit, we don't have any other states and this yields 0. Acting on 1 and 0 increases the second quantum number. And when the raising operator acts on the lower limit eigenstates, it changes to the next ket, which is 1 and 0 with the given value. Ket 1 and 0 is the second column, and 1 and minus 1 represents the third column. These are the only non-zero elements, and all the elements on the first column should be 0. The only row that yields a non-zero element when acting on the raised 1 and 0 ket is the first row. And the only row that is not zero on the third column is the second row. So we can write the raising operator to be this matrix. We can do the same thing for the lowering operators. This shows the first column, this is the second column, and all the elements on the third column are zero. So these are the only non-zero elements of the lowering operator matrix which as you can see are on the second row first column and third row second column. Now that we have J plus and J minus matrices, we can find Jx and Jy operators and matrix representations, which can be also written like this. In the upcoming video, we are going to talk about the geometrical representation of angular momentum.